Well, hello, hello, peeps. It's finally time for my season two Dragonflight Demon Hunter quick guide for the solo shuffle. Well, finally, Mika. Yes, my dear viewers, finally, we're doing this quick and easy timestamps down below. So no speech on gear acquisition other than just send that since at this point, conquest is unlocked. Hence, I'm just gonna shotgun you with the info. Master remains the main stat, but with the build we are running now, haste is also good, so no more need to look for world PvP items and such. I'm also thinking of trying haste-focused itemization, but you will have to stay tuned for that. As far as crafted items, you want to spork cloak for sure, second doesn't matter, but Infurious boots are always good. One note about enchants, I'm running currently Sophic Devotion, but I used to play Shadow Flame Reap. I can say that Shadow Flame is a lot more consistent, but Sophic does give you these god mode windows, so ultimately it will depend on you. Talents, 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 talents. So, uh, first off we're gonna start off with the meta build, I believe Trance uh, is the one who kind of came up with the build, so um, definitely should just read through all the different talents that we're picking here and kind of understand why we're picking what we're picking. The only real kind of uh, optimization you can do is Mortal Dance can be removed if you're playing with a class that doesn't, you know, has a Mortal Strike effect. You can take that, put it into Straight Glaive for maximum Throw Glaive, uh, sorry, not Throw Glaive, Chaos Strike and I Beam Damage. Really, really important that you just go and read and realize what's what, you know. Uh, the build is, of course, focused more on Emulation Aura. Emulation Aura being just a good button in both the AoE and single target in this build, so... Uh, just again, important for you to go and read through these. Uh, now we're gonna go over my build, just because there's no real differences on the Demon Hunter side. Um, uh, my build is just fully uh, focused, uh, if you haven't seen my video on it, um, fully focused on um, Chaos Strike, and you have kind of an additional survivability part with Demonic Appetite, just giving you constant uh, souls that you're just got getting healed from. It also makes uh, Blood Moon give you more um, Fury, and gives you kind of it gives you kind of a different playstyle when it comes to Fury, and it also gives you a different um, damage profile. This, of course, has a little, slightly bit more uh, single target damage, um, but it loses out in AoE, of course, to the more meta build. Now, I'm not sure if this is better, I just uh, have been running this um, recently because I like uh, the souls, I like the extra heal that I have been getting. Um, definitely versus double melee or like any situation where you're just constantly cleaving, you should always be running the what's the more meta build just because this build loses quite a bit of damage on emulation aura, which is actually huge in AoE. Um, now we can kind of go onto the Demon Hunter side. Um, there's not much to kind of think about here. You kind of have two points which are movable around uh, these two points. Um, Dark Knight, um, really good. Uh, sorry, um, Long Knight, really good for um, Soul Shuffle. Um, I also use really use Swallowed Anger for kind of an additional um, Fury Generator. Also, in the more meta build, uh, I feel like this is kind of necessary just because then consume magic doesn't like do anything for you without Blood Moon, you know, or something like that. So um, uh, it's very more more important, I feel like, to, to use it in the meta build. In my build, you, you, if you're just using Blood Moon, you're gonna get 30 Fury anyways, right? So I don't think there's much to really say. There's not really any really good talents. We are running now, if you've kind of played Demon Hunter Season 1, we are running now this to just increase our burst during I-Beam windows. So there's not really many optimizations you can do to really change what's gonna happen in the game uh, actually one i guess optimization you can go down here if you're just getting destroyed by magic damage for some reason all right to make your sigils uh, reduce the magic damage you're taking but really ultimately there's not uh, too many choices that we have here like sure the fell fire haste is also not a bad idea like you have some talents on the side you can pick up but it's overall nothing is gonna impact your gameplay too significantly to, we're not gonna go to the PvP talents, um, Chaotic Imprint, always mandatory, the 10% damage increase to you, it, it, I feel like this talent either needs to get put into Demon Hunter's core build or removed from the game so the Demon Hunter can get kind of uh, balanced more around just its own damages because I feel like this... It's really silly, right, just to have a um, PvP talent that's like a 10% damage modifier like, just clean 10% damage modifier, just kind of weird, in my opinion. Um, now we're gonna go to the talents that we can actually choose. Yeah, I usually go for Glimpse and Blood Moon is uh, baseline. Glimpse, always good, um, you can stop CC attempts, you can block even, like, big uh, spells. Um, if you're not, how would you say, glimpsing stuff, if you're not uh, dodging CC with it, you should definitely change this talent out, because really... Um, doesn't really offer as much damage reduction as it did in Season 1 before it got nerfed, so 
it's not really a talent for damage reduction, it's really just a talent for you to try and um, immune CC, right? So if you're not um, having luck with that, you should definitely always switch out this talent. Reverse magic, not much to say, reverses magical effects, um, you should definitely run this anytime your healer is uh, gonna get CC'd, something like a hunter, paladins, mages, anything that's gonna CC your healer with like one of those longer CC's, this is really good. Um, Rainier from above, entertainment, really important talents in this current meta. Um, I feel like um, you actually have to be running entertainment and or rain from above a lot more than you, you'd like, you'd actually want to. Um, simply just because at this point you're really, really like physical damage just murders you. Like that's not much to say about that, right? Physical damage just completely, completely murders you. Um, so it's very important to make sure you're using the entertainment basically as like um, disarm or something, right? And you're using uh, rain from above in situations like um, let's say there's a um, death knight, you know, TSG or. Uh, Retribution Paladin Warrior, Retribution Paladin, anything, right? Any kind of double melee comp, even Survival Hunter and BM Hunters, right? Because you really, at this point, I feel like you really need an additional defensive. And because our passive defenses are kind of nerfed uh, from Season 1, you should just... Um, you can just kind of have to run Rain from above, even though it uh, doesn't do as much damage as it did in Season 1. Definitely. And Blood Moon is kind of a greedy talent you usually want to kind of run. Uh, this is mainly versus uh, Warlocks, just because you can, if you didn't know, you can use it on a Warlocks Demon and actually get two different Demon Souls. Basically, have 40% damage, uh, you know, amplifier, so it's like, actually insane. Uh, almost always you want to run it versus Warlocks. And you almost always want to run it as kind of a greedy talent. I just feel like it gives you like an additional heal, additional, um, if you're running my build, additional fury generation. So. Um, just kind of de will depend on your uh, personal kind of feeling, if you're feeling safe to run more of a greedy talent. I just feel like at this um, current meta, something like this, or you know, something like this, or this, right, is more of a meta um, PvP talent build that you would kind of, you know, be running. I already have a rotation video for DH, so I would appreciate you following the link in the top right corner of the description. But Mika, we are already watching this video! Ah! Uh Okay, sustained rotation, blade dance, throw glaive, chaos strike priority. Don't overcap on fury. Simple. One thing is that emulation aura is the highest priority in the meta build, while in mine it's a fury generator. Mini burst. Build fury, throw glaive, stun, I beam, chaos strike, blade dance into sustained rotation. This is also your base opener. Simple. Meta burst. Build fury, throw glaive, stun, I beam, chaos strike, blade dance, meta, blade dance, chaos strike, I beam, chaos strike, blade dance into sustained. Simple, yes. Finally, the hunt can pretty much be added any place in the combos, you can save it for a later burst window, or just send it on one of your items. Now let's go over some Season 2 DH specifics. Currently DH has been left in the dust by other classes. The buffs to other classes coupled with certain nerfs that follow DH from Dragonflight preseason have caught up with us. Not to mention how strong monks and rogues are, who are always a counter. Hence the shift to the melee focused meta actually hurt DH quite a bit, since DH has no passive defense versus physical damage and is a leather class. It's imperative in full physical lobbies to be on point with both CC and defensive usage, while also trying to finish the game as fast as possible since as dampening ramps up you just get rotted down more and more. Any mistake defensively or DRCC could cause you to have a game over very shortly. Basically right now you're a rogue without stealth. And that's it peeps for my season 2 soul shuffle quick guide. You got plenty full soul shuffle analysis on my channel that you're welcome to watch. For my full thoughts on the DH, pros and cons, tips and tricks, you can watch my full DH guide. Oh yes, now I'm sending you to a different video. Just keep the talents and the gearing parts. Let me tell you on the kitchen. No! Butts!